Good morning. The Secretary General uh, and the Foreign Minister will make uh, short opening remarks and then we'll have time for a few questions remotely. Secretary General. Foreign Minister Kuleba, Der Dimitro, welcome back to NATO headquarters. It's always great to see you. Uh, and thank you for uh, coming uh, to the NATO headquarters today to participate uh, in the NATO Ukraine Commission to discuss the security situation in and around uh, Ukraine. We are seriously concerned by ongoing developments, and NATO is monitoring the situation very uh, closely. In recent weeks, uh, Russia has moved thousands of uh, combat ready troops to Ukraine's uh, borders the largest massing of Russian troops since the illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014. Over the last days, uh, several Ukrainian soldiers have been killed in eastern Ukraine. I want to express my condolences um, for the recent uh, losses suffered by the Ukrainian armed forces. Russia's uh, considerable military buildup is unjustified, unexplained, and deeply concerning. Russia must end this military buildup in and around Ukraine, stop its provocations, and de escalate immediately. We regret Russia's decision not to participate in the recent meeting at the OSCE to dispel concerns about its unusual military activities. Russia must respect its international commitments. NATO, supports, uh, NATO support for Ukraine's sovereignty and, territor and territorial integrity uh, is unwavering. We do not and will not recognize Russia's illegal and illegitimate annexation of Crimea. We continue to call on Russia to end its support for the militants uh, in eastern Ukraine and withdraw uh, its forces from Ukrainian territory. NATO stands with Ukraine. Allies continue to provide significant practical uh, support so that Ukraine can better provide for its own security. Ukraine's new status as an enhanced opportunity partner demonstrates how both sides benefit from our long-standing partnership. We are helping to strengthen capabilities, including with training for Ukrainian armed forces, and allies also participate in joint exercises. We have stepped up our cooperation in the Black Sea region with more exercises and port visits. And we support Ukraine's wide-ranging reform agenda, which will make Ukraine more resilient and help advance Ukraine's Euro-Atlantic aspirations. Allies stand by the decisions taken at the Bucharest uh, summit. Reforms will bring Ukraine closer to NATO. We want to see Ukraine succeed, and we are committed to helping you to do so. So, Minister Koleba, once again, welcome to NATO. It's great to see you here. Please. Thank you, Secretary General. It's good to be here today at the NATO headquarters in Brussels. I'm grateful to you and all allies for their prompt reply to President Zelensky's initiative of convening today's extraordinary NATO-Ukraine Council to exchange views on the security situation in the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine, as well as along our border with Russia. Russia continues its military buildup along the Ukraine-Russia border in our occupied territories and on the seas. It gathers troops in three directions, in the northeast of Ukraine, in Crimea, in the south, and Donbas in the east. Over the past weeks, Russia has drastically intensified its belligerent propaganda, which dehumanizes Ukrainians and incites hatred towards Ukraine. It is, it is even more worrying to see Russian officials joining this campaign by openly threatening Ukraine with war and destruction of our statehood. It is against this background that the NATO-Ukraine Commission will convene under Article 15 of the NATO-Ukraine Charter on Distinctive Partnership. This article says that NATO and Ukraine can use a crisis consultative mechanism to consult together whenever Ukraine perceives 
a direct threat to its territorial integrity, political independence, or security. The moment has come. I thank Secretary General for a very clear message of support of Ukraine. By gathering today, we try to avoid the mistake that was made in 2014 when Russia was ready to act swiftly and pursue its military goals in Crimea and Donbas while our Western partners were considering their reactions to what was happening on the ground. Russia will not be able to catch anyone by surprise anymore. Ukraine and our friends remains, remain vigilant. We do not and will not lose time. And should Moscow take any reckless move or start a new spiral of violence, it will be costly in all senses. I would like to reassure you that Ukraine does not want war. We do not plan any offensive or escalation. Ukraine is devoted to diplomatic and political means of settling the conflict. Today, at the meeting with the Secretary General, we discussed how NATO and uh, uh, allies can support Ukraine <clears throat> under these circumstances. Every word of support matters, and we appreciate it. However, we also need some very practical support, and I appreciate the readiness of the Secretary General to work with us on this matter. I will also be raising these points with allies at the meeting of the, at the forthcoming meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council. As for the ongoing practical cooperation with NATO, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to NATO and allies for their substantial assistance within the trust funds and comprehensive assistance package, as well as for their help to efficiently develop annual national programs under the auspices of the NATO-Ukraine Commission. Ukraine, NATO, and allies can do a lot to prevent Moscow from escal further escalating the situation and to ensure security in the Black Sea region and in the Euro-Atlantic space as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for a few questions virtually. We'll first go to Jonah Fisher uh, of the BBC in Kiev. Hello, thanks for, for taking uh, questions from me. To, 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 to the NATO Secretary General, what would you say uh, to people who say that all this talk of support and warnings and serious concern are just words and likely to be ignored? Uh, and to Ukraine's foreign minister, what sort of things do you think Russia needs to see from NATO countries? Because you, you made it pretty clear there, you, you'd like to see uh, more than just words. What we have seen since 2014 is that uh, NATO allies and NATO has uh, provided significant support uh, uh, to Ukraine in many different ways. Uh, we uh, express strong political support for uh, Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty. But the NATO allies and NATO also provide uh, practical support. Uh, we help them to build their defense and security institutions. We help them to modernize uh, their uh, armed forces with the reforms. And uh, NATO allies also provide um, uh, uh, training, uh, support with training, exercises, uh, participating in joint exercises, and, uh, and also support in, uh, different, uh, uh, in other different uh, ways. So what we have seen is uh, that uh, NATO and Ukraine has, uh, have developed uh, uh, a partnership uh, which is strong, uh, which, uh, which has been uh, strengthened over the last years, also by granting uh, 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 Ukraine the special status as an enhanced opportunity partner. Um, and uh, we have also increased the uh, presence uh, in the Black Sea region, in the Black Sea, with more uh, naval presence, more ships, uh, more port uh, visits. And we are constantly looking into how we can continue to step up and provide uh, more practical support uh, to Ukraine to help them defend themselves. Um, let me also add that uh, after the illegal annexation of Crimea back in 2014 and the continued destabilization of eastern Ukraine by Russian-backed uh, separatists, 
uh, NATO allies have also responded by increasing the readiness of our forces, uh, by, uh, for the first time of the year, so uh, cutting defence spending. All allies are now investing more in defence. And we have increased also our presence, military presence, in the eastern part of the alliance, in the Black Sea region, but also in the Baltic uh, region. All of this was done uh, uh, as a response to uh, the, uh, the Russia, uh, Russia's aggressive actions against uh, Ukraine. Uh, and on top of that, of course, NATO allies have in different ways also imposed economic sanctions uh, uh, on, uh, on, uh, against Russia or on Russia. So uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a support which is demonstrated not only in words but also in deeds. And during the meeting today, we will, of course, discuss how we can further strengthen our partnership and how we can further uh, demonstrate the strong support of NATO allies and NATO to Ukraine. Uh, strategically, Russia has to understand that Ukraine belongs to the world of democracies, to the Western world, and uh, the West will not allow Russia to shatter Ukrainian democracy and sovereignty. This is the message, the very clear and very simple message that our friends and partners can convey to Russia. Ukraine is not part of the Russian world and will never be considered as such. Uh, at the operational level, we need measures which will deter U Russia and which will contain its uh, aggressive intentions. This could be, as the Secretary General mentioned, uh, a new round of sanctions which would raise the price of uh, Russian aggression. This could be a direct support aimed at strengthening Ukraine's defense capabilities, because we do know that Russia spares no effort to prevent third countries from cooperating with Ukraine in the defense sector. Russia is working hard to undermine our defense capabilities. There is only one thing that uh, I really would like to highlight here. The price some measures, which we are talking about, may look costly, but the price of prevention will still be lower than the price of uh, stopping the war and mitigating its consequences. So it's better to act now to prevent Russia from further escalating the situation. Thank you. Next question goes to Irina Soma from news agency Interfax Ukraine. Thank you, Anna. Uh, Secretary General, you already mentioned uh, the status of an enhanced opportunity partner. I would like to know, because already uh, it's almost a year since NATO granted this status to Ukraine, what kind of additional value uh, the key of participation in this program bring to alliance. And Minister, can you please uh, tell us what already has become an important in this program for Ukraine? Thank you. The Enhanced Opportunity Partnership is uh, an important uh, uh, partnership and it demonstrates the value that the NATO allies attach to the partnership with uh, uh, Ukraine. Um, we have a very limited number of uh, enhanced opportunity partners in NATO. It's Sweden, Finland, uh, Georgia, Jordan and Australia and now also Ukraine. And that's a platform to further strengthen our political cooperation, our practical cooperation uh, to, to work together. This is good for Ukraine but also good for uh, NATO allies. Uh, and I strongly welcome uh, the um, renewed uh, commitment and the very strong message uh, of uh, uh, the importance of the uh, uh, close partnership, which is demonstrated through the Enhanced Opportunity Partnership, which has been established uh, between Ukraine and, uh, and NATO. So we are uh, building on that step by step, both uh, when it comes to political, but also practical uh, activities and cooperation within the Enhanced Opportunity Partnership uh, framework. EOP is a very practical instrument and uh, it's a very valuable one. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Secretary General and allies for granting us uh, this uh, status. Um, 
EOP will help to significantly increase interoperability between Ukrainian armed forces and defense sector as such with uh, uh, the, defense, se with the mil uh, defense sector of uh, NATO. Uh, we already launched a number of activities within the framework of the EOP. I believe that uh, the current um, escalation by the Russian Federation in the East demonstrates that Ukraine and NATO have to exploit the possibilities, opportunities provided by EOP uh, as soon as possible, and we have to step up our efforts without any delay to fill EOP with new joint activities. And final quick question, Gruholm from uh, NRK in Oslo. Uh, one question for the Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg first. Uh, uh, is it is it possible for Ukraine to become a full NATO member as long as it doesn't control its own territory fully, uh, like Crimea and uh, to also a certain extent uh, the eastern Ukraine? And then a, a question for the foreign minister. Um, how far do you think, do you perceive that Russia is willing to go sending its own soldiers and military equipment to eastern Ukraine in the situation that we see now? Thank you. It is for the 30 NATO allies to decide when Ukraine is uh, ready for NATO membership. And no one else has uh, any right to try to uh, meddle or to interfere in that process. Uh, it's a sovereign right of every nation, uh, like Ukraine, to apply for uh, membership. And then it's the right for the 30 allies to decide uh, when uh, 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 membership is going to be uh, uh, offered. Uh, this is an important principle because um, uh, Russia is now trying to re-establish some kind of sphere of influence where they try to decide what neighbors can do. And uh, that is a world we really uh, try to uh, leave behind us, uh, where big powers could decide what uh, small neighbors could do. Uh, so therefore, we strongly support the sovereign right of Ukraine to apply and to decide its own path. And then for the 30 allies, and only the 30 allies, to decide uh, when uh, the standards are uh, met. That's also the reason why we are supporting the efforts <coughs> uh, uh, of Ukraine to reform and modernize. Um, a reform uh, is uh, uh, the, the only path, the best way towards uh, further Euro-Atlantic uh, integration. And, uh, and uh, we strongly reject the idea that we uh, hear from Moscow that Russia has a, a kind of veto, a right to deny other countries the sovereign right to decide its own path, including what kind of security arrangements they want to be part of, including a membership of uh, NATO. Um, in 2008, at the Bucharest summit, NATO made a promise to Ukraine and Georgia. And uh, we do believe that the alliance is the institution that can be trusted, that keeps its promises. For us, NATO membership is uh, of Ukraine is a matter of time, and there are no uh, other criteria which have to be met when it comes to the relations with Russia. Uh, back in 2014, it was unimaginable that Russia would go as far as uh, occupying Crimea and then Donbas. I would like to recall that the initial plan of Russian strategists was to cut Ukraine in half and create a political entity called New Russia, Novorossiya. This plan failed due to the effective countermeasures taken by the Ukrainian state and the sacrifice of our soldiers and officers. Partners, including NATO allies, played an important role in, help, in helping Ukraine to stop Russia where it stands now. So when you ask me how far Russia can go, uh, my answer to you, I cannot exclude anything. But I do believe that we have all tools available, not only to prevent Russia from making a step for a single step forward, but also to make it withdraw from the occupied territories of Ukraine. Ukraine will reestablish its sovereignty. 
and the entire security space in that part of the Euro-Atlantic region will therefore be, be strengthened. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you.